Hello everyone and welcome to another model railway review from the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel. And what's the model have I got for you today? Because in today's review you're in for a treat because I'm going to be taking a look at the Sutton's Locomotive Workshop Class 24. Now I've been meaning to get one of these models for quite some time now and so only this week have I decided to treat myself to one of these models because the reason I didn't get one before is because I was buying other models but this week I decided to treat myself to one because I thought it was high time that I got one of these and the, the version I've gone for is 97201 Experiment because of the livery. I mean the livery that this model has, it's such a beautiful and unusual and striking livery which is the reason why I went for this model. Which this model came from the Rail Exclusive website. Unfortunately at the time that the website was down but we was able to order this model through the phone. So thank you to Rail Exclusive for that. And I've already had a look at this model and I can tell you now this model is absolutely amazing. Now normally at this point I'd start unboxing the model but before I do that there's just a few things that I want to go through you with because when you open up the parcel the stuff that you get are these. First of all you have this which is this order form that you get from when you've ordered the product and you get some water slide transfers as well just stapled onto there as you can see, which you've got the nameplates there and you've got this logo for sort of locomotive workshops, which I am thinking of putting on a vent van to look like that on the layout that one of the vans is actually carrying the Sutton's Class 24s and delivering them out to the shops. So that's something I'm going to be doing later on. We also have this which is just this leaflet of all the models that are available to buy and on the back it tells you about the class 24 slash 1 which is what they are currently working on and you can pre-order this model as well you also have this which is this sheet which talks to you about the super capacity to stay alive upgrade and talks to you about fitting DCC sound and the DCC control as well. The model I've gone for is the standard model which doesn't have DCC or the sound because I don't have DCC and I'm not planning to go DCC if I'm honest. And also, last but not least, we have this envelope. And so inside here we have a business card which I do quite like this because it it's done in the style of a train ticket you've also got this little sheet there as well and you get some brief history of the locomotive the allocation history as well of where this locomotive was shedded at and the history of the real locomotive so I just thought I'd go through those so what we're going to do now is we're going to unbox this model on screen but I'm not going to drill over the packaging and then we're going to get straight into the model in detail as well as taking a look at the detail pack that we get with the model.
so here we have the model and I must say I've never seen a model that comes in a metal tin before that's not something you see every day with these models and also as you can see this model is sat on a plinth which is not something I've seen on models either well not on model locomotives in double O gauge or any other gauge usually this is the sort of thing that you see on model cars not on locomotives it is screwed onto the base so I shall get this model off the base and then we can have a look at the detail pack and the model in detail So the model has been removed from the plinth and so now we're going to have a look at the detail accessories and there are two bags of the detail parts that we get with this model so in the first bag we have a couple of tension lock couplings and we have some vacuum and air pipes in there a couple of air tanks and a few other bits and pieces and in the other accessory bag we have got some head code discs so I guess you could take these ones off and put your own head code on them if you wanted to. You've also got some lamp points in there as well, which are spares. But to be honest with you, I won't be needed to fit in any of the detail parts from the detail bag on this model, other than the couplings, because this model already has so much detail on it already. So with such a highly and well detailed model, where do we start for the detail? Because the amount of detail this model has is mind-blowing. We'll start off with the buffer beam detail, which has all been pre-fitted, so you don't have to fit any of this yourself. We have the chain link coupling there, because it's not a screw link one, because it doesn't have the screw link mechanism on it. We've got a step there for the driver to climb up onto the front of the loco. We have the jumper cable and we've got all the vacuum and air pipes and I like that they've all been pre-fitted so you don't have to fit any of it yourself it will be interesting if we have to remove some of it later on though because when we fit the tension lock coupling it may catch on the detail because you do have to cut some of it off on the Helgen models and also I like how the buffers have been painted silver and we've even got grease on the buffers as well not real grease, it has been painted on but just look at how the grease has been painted on. It looks like that someone has actually put grease on the buffers. So the way they've done that, that is very effective and very realistic looking. And also the buffers are indeed sprung as standard with all if not most models now. That one is a bit stiff but I don't really care. We've also got separately fitted lamp irons and the separately fitted head code discs this model also has working lights as well we've also got the crisp printed warning signs and separately fitted handrails on the model as you can see and we've got the separately fitted window wipers on the windows just there the cab interior detail inside this model is phenomenal it's second to none I mean just look at the detail inside the cab I mean, I think the detail in the cab is absolutely amazing. You've got some signs there on the back. You've got the seat that's been painted and all the controls that's all been painted. There's even the fire extinguisher there as well. You've also got glazing in all the cab interior windows. And separately fitted handrails and the very fine handrails as well. You've also got the top's data panel as well, crisply printed on the cab sides and the loco's number 97201 which they've used the correct style numerals and they've been crisply applied the detail on the bogies and on the underframe is superb there's no other word for it we've got the sand boxes and the sand in gear we've got the footstep the axle box covers have been painted as have the wheel rims they've been painted white not so much very often that you see on these models and also just look at the detail on the wheels as well you've got those little holes in the wheels that you see on the real locomotives 
so it's nice to see that on the model also you've got the springs as well and also you've got this piping which is not moulded onto the bogey that has been separately fitted as you can see and also even the detail on the underframe just there that's all been separately fitted as well and that just looks absolutely superb to see the battery boxes have also got some nice detail on them as well we've got some more piping there on the underframe under the body separately fitted there's some nice data on the fuel tanks as well including the fuel tank dial obviously it's a non-working dial but just look at the printing on that I mean that just looks superb it really is stunning it's nice to see that with some detail on which just adds to the detail and again you've got some more separately fitted detail underneath the body there on the underframe and again more separately fitted superb separately applied details on the bogies now this model has actually got a party trick up its sleeve now unfortunately I can't show this to you because I don't want to risk damaging the model in any way shape or form that's the last thing I want to do especially after the amount of money I spent on this because one has to take care with these models but these little panels here you can actually remove them and behind them there's actually detail behind them to replicate the insides of the engine I can't show this here and I apologize that I can't but I don't want to risk damaging this model to do so but these detail parts they can indeed be removable so you can take them off and that is a nice little bit of detail to have it might come across a bit of a gimmick, I'm sure, but it's nice to have that, at least. Because also you could have it on a shed somewhere and take this bit of detail off and maybe get a, a step ladder and a guy looking up to it. So that maybe he's took the panel off and he's looking inside the engine to do a bit of work on it or whatever. On the body sides you've got some very nice rivet details just here. And also just look at the grills. And I really do love the finish on those and the textile feature on them. That really is superb. And they're not moulded grills either. They are separately fitted. And they look superb. They really do. This is one hell of a model. Now we come on to the livery application. And I must say the livery is absolutely gorgeous. As I said earlier, this is an unusual livery and it's quite striking. That's why I went for this livery. And also it's not a livery I have on any other of my models. So this is a model that's certainly going to stand out from all the others. But I, I really do like this livery. And I think, in my personal opinion, that of all the liveries to go for on this model, that this one is probably the best, if not one of the best liveries to go for. You have a gorgeous shade of blue. And a very nice gorgeous shade of red as well and also you've got the crisp fine white stripe going around the red I mean it is a gorgeous livery to look at and even with the BR double arrow logo crispy prints on the body sides which really does set this livery off in my opinion and also the Hornby Mark 1's coming out in the Derby RTC livery at some point this year hopefully they will supplement this model very nicely and Batman did some of those as well which you can find on eBay they are a bit expensive so I might buy some of those perhaps in the future one day to go with this model but then this is a livery that no matter what I stick behind the model it's not going to look bad with any of my stock but then also because it's my layout so rule one now we come on to the detail on the roof you've got a separately fitted mesh roof grille and under that you've got a separately fitted fan that's been painted red the fan doesn't spin but then it doesn't really need to to be honest with you you've also got some rivet detail as well on the roof you've also got that latch there as well at the top as well as the exhaust and there's some rivet detail on that and the exhaust itself here has been painted so that looks nice you've also got some separately fitted handrails as well on the roof as well there 
and just there. Once I get my cocktail stick to shot. You've even got this little bit of detail here as well, separately fitted and painted as well. So there really is a lot of separately fitted detail on the roof as well. And also that little grill there as well. Again, separately fitted. So even on the roof, there's a lot of detail to look at as well. So first impressions, there's not a single moulded bit of detail on this model anywhere. It's all been separately fitted and it's just got so much detail on this model. So it really is a well detailed model. So that's money well spent and it's such an absolutely beautiful model. So what we need to do now is we're going to get this model on the track and we're going to see how it runs. So I've got the model line on its roof again because I'm going to show you how to fit the tension lock coupling because what you get in the little detail bag you get the NEM pocket and you've got the tension lock so the tension lock coupling just slots into the pocket as so but as you can see with the end on the coupling the ends are very much like that of the tension lock so with the model, as you can see there, there's that little hole for it to go into. And so that just simply slots into place. And that slots in like so. So I just thought I'd put that in the video just to show you. So now we come on to the running performance for the Class 24. And it runs absolutely beautifully. And it runs as it should do, straight from the box. Because you pay a lot of money for these models, so there shouldn't be any motors burning out or stuttering movement. It runs exactly as we expect it to. And it's a beautiful runner as well, like I say. And a rather quiet mechanism as well. So, really impressive. So I've turned the lights off in the garage so you can see the lights on this model better. I have still left the door open but the lights have still been turned off so we can still see the lights on this model better. So, for the directional lights, going forward, you can see we have the lights on the front there that light up. And we also have the cab interior lighting, which works directionally. And you've got the rear tail lights there on the model, which also light up. So, for the loaded test run, I've got the Class 24 pulling the rake of BR Blue and Grey coaches. And this is the full rake. And that's a total of seven coaches there, and she can manage those with no problems at all. It is also worth mentioning that the NEM pocket on the Class 24 doesn't swing about. But, as you can see here, that's no problems at all, because it can still go around bends without derailing the coaches. So that means we don't have to cut off any of the detail parts on the buffer beam for the stop to go around the bend without it derailing, catching on the detail parts. So all for all then, the Sutton's Locomotive Workshop Class 24 is an absolute gem. It really is an amazing model. 
I can't find anything wrong with it. I can't fault this model. And it, it is an expensive model. This model cost me 193 quid. It's not the most expensive model I've bought. But even for that price, this model is definitely worth getting. It's definitely worth the money. It's money well spent. And I'm absolutely glad that I spent that money on this model now. I'm just glad to finally have a Class 24 in my collection from Sutton's Locomotive Workshop. I highly recommend you get them, because if you don't have one of these models, then you're severely missing out on them. So, highly recommended by me, and I take my hat off to Sutton's Locomotive Workshop for producing this model. And I shall be looking forward to seeing the Class 24 slash 1 or any other products that they make in the future. And I think that this is the best model that I own. It's definitely up there. So that says quite a lot. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave you with some running shots of the Sutton's Locomotive Workshop Class 24 running around the layout. Thank you for watching my review on the Class 24 from Sutton's Locomotive Workshop. I hope you've enjoyed this review. As ever, don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to post a comment and smash the like button. Check out all my other content on the on my YouTube channel and I'll see you again next time but until then take care